Hello, this is Lino Tadros from Falafel Software, and this video is going to be about source controlling your database of Sitefinity. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and start a brand new project in here, and we'll call this one Test Source Control. That's the name of the project. And I'm going to use my normal license in here, which is a standard license, and I'm going to go ahead and administer the new website. We'll let it go ahead and start this really quickly. And there we go. This time I'm going to use regular SQL Server. I'm going to use my NT authentication. The server will be DOT, which is my local machine. And I have SQL Server 2008 R2 running on my machine right now. We'll create a brand new um, database in here called Test Source Control. Okay, we'll go ahead and say continue. It will go ahead and create the database for me. And when it's ready, I'm going to go ahead and enter my username and password, the brand new one for admin, so we can have this step completely completed. And there we go. Come in here. We'll say Lino, Tadros. We'll leave it as admin. Enter a password. We'll say admin123. Admin123. One, two, three. Admin, one, two, three and Lino at f.com, there you go, we'll say go, and we'll give it a few seconds in here to finish up the database, and we'll be done. And there we go, we have ourselves a site at localhost with a port number, at test source control, and right now I'm at the dashboard for the back end. All right, sounds great. Let's go ahead and leave this alone for right now, and I just wanted to show you a site in here, and that site is Redgate. I'm going to go ahead and visit this site. This site actually, um, this is a company uh, in Europe that has some very, very good system and different tools for dealing with SQL Server and for .NET as well. We use their products for a long time now, and they are definitely very essential, not only for Sitefinity, but for any serious .NET developers with databases as well. So the ones that I would like to show you for SQL Server, for instance, that are really important to, to take a look at, uh, SQL Compare, that is for the schema, SQL Data Compare for the data, uh, and the one for this video, I would like to show you the SQL Source Control. There is a lot of other things, part of the tool belt for SQL, like SQL Prompt and SQL Doc and Data Generator and Dependency. There is a lot of different things that I would definitely recommend for you to take a look at. Again, I'm more interested in this video to show you the SQL Source Control. So let me go ahead and close this for right now. And I'm going to go ahead and open up my... Uh, SQL uh, Management Studio, there you go, that is SQL Management Studio. And notice this is 2008 R2, so it's ready also for the cloud if you need to. And automatically I have, uh, as you can see, the SQL Source Control installed already from Redgate inside of my Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio. I'm going to hook up to my uh, current machine, which is my local machine here for SQL Server, we'll say Connect. And now these are all my databases. Remember, we just created one called Test Source Control. The Sitefinity created this for me. If I open up the tables, there is tons of tables in here available by Sitefinity that got created for me. This is a pretty empty database. I didn't create any pages or any content or anything yet. But again, this is all the database. I know for, uh, for a minimum that I actually have the admin username and password part of this uh, database in here for Test Source Control. One of the things I'd like to show you here that you get the source, the SQL source control um, page right away inside of your uh, management studio, and you have a chance to link this specific database called test source control to um, several options of source control. You can use, for instance, subversion. You can use a team foundation server. You can even uh, use a built-in repository built on subversion right inside of um, on, your, on your machine here. So if I say link database to source control, You'll notice that I can use Subversion. If I have a repository anywhere that I have access to, I can put the name of the repository here with my username and password, and I will be able uh, to use Subversion. I can also use Team Foundation Server. I can use Vault. And there are some more options for JIT, and Mercurial, uh, Perforce, and other system as well. Just for evaluating in here, you can click on that, and that will create a subversion server on your machine just for testing this out. So there are so many different things that you can do in here, and the system will make it extremely easy for you to uh, just to play around with that. Even if you don't have some version or Team Foundation server or anything, you can at least try this with a built-in server for subversion on your machine. 
In my case in here, I'm going to use Team Foundation Server, and we are lucky enough definitely to have an account with DiscountASP.net. Our friends there have give a, given us a, an account to test with. So I'm going to go ahead and enter my system in here. It's available under TFS02.DiscountASP.net, TFS, and the name of my project collection is Site TFS. Um, a lot of people actually have a problem connecting to that server because the default is 8080. You need to use the HTTPS portion of it, so this would be 443, for instance, in here. And when you click on Browse right now, it will try to go ahead and log you in. So it will say Browse to find out where we're going to actually uh, save that, and there it is. It's actually um, opening it up in here. And I'm going to go under this specific directory. I'm going to create a new folder. We'll call this one, for instance, Test Source control so i'm creating a new um, directory in my repository in tfs we can put a comment in here if you'd like i'm going to say okay for right now it is creating the folder on uh, on tfs we'll give it a second and it's done all right from that point on folks i can actually open up my directory and there is my test source control so if i select this specific directory now i know that my uh, test source control in um, in uh, SQL Server will be automatically available as a source control system in my TFS right away. You can use it as a dedicated database. That means each developer will work on their own set of uh, tables in the database on their machine and then will be able to uh, check in and check out. Or you can actually have a shared database. That means you will immediately work on a shared version of the database. I usually like to use the dedicated uh, database. It all depends on how you're used to work with databases in your company and what are you comfortable with with the rest of the team that you're working with. So for right now, I'll leave it as a dedicated database. We'll say link that. And it's going to link the database to our source control system at discountasp.net and it's done. We'll say OK there and we'll now go ahead and say commit changes and you'll notice it will actually take a look exactly what we have in here. Notice uh, the ser server management studio have put this blue sphere in here next to every table that looks like it's brand new. There is nothing actually in the, con in the uh, TFS right now. So I'm going to actually click on all of them by clicking the first one, 160 different objects, mainly 160 tables there, and I'm going to say commit. Once we do that, it will go through each and every one of these tables and it will commit them to the source control system. And I will be safe at this point knowing that my database is uh, somewhere in TFS. So in case something happens, I have the entire structure of my Sitefinity database available somewhere. I'm going to click OK on there. It will resync. So now I can go to any machine um, that have never seen this database before and I can actually get latest by doing exactly the same thing by pointing to the same TFS and I can get the entire database again on any machine so I can start working with it. So whenever we have, for instance, a new employee coming in and we would like them uh, to work with the Sitefinity in the staging uh, process, for instance, they can just get the latest, click on that and automatically they will get the latest. Right now they are identical between what I have on my machine and what's available out there. Alrighty, there is one big thing I need to mention in here. This is not about the data, folks. This is about the structure. This is the metadata of the database, okay? You'll have to do a little bit more work to actually keep your data. And I'm going to take care of that in the following video, but for right now, I just wanted to show the source control of the schema itself, okay? So let's go back in here, for instance, to table. Let's go ahead and open one of our tables in here, one that is being used a lot, for instance, which is the page data. Uh, let's go ahead and actually make a change in the columns. There is tons of common col columns in the uh, in the page data table, but I'm going to go in here, we'll right-click on it, and we'll say Design. And let's say, for instance, I'm going to go all the way to the bottom in here, and we'll create something called the Lino column. There you go. And in here, we'll make this a, uh, a var char, make it 50, allow it nulls is fine, and we'll say Save this guy. Alrighty. And also, while we're at it, let's go ahead and create a new table inside of the Sitefinity database for whatever reason. Again, this could have happened using open access from the, from the outside. It could have happened manually here inside of the uh, management studio. It doesn't matter how you got your table in there or made modification to the schema. I just wanted to show you what will happen when something like this occurs. I'm going to come in here with, say, table, new table. We'll come in here with, say, column 1, and we'll say it's an integer. And we're not allowing for nulls. And we'll come in here, we'll say column two, for instance. 
and this will be a var char 50 and that's good enough hopefully you can actually create some primary keys do whatever you want in here make it uh, incremental whatever you'd like we'll save this guy we'll call this one lino table in there we'll say okay and we're done now notice that actually there is a blue sphere here next to test source control that tells you that there is a difference between what's going on in tfs and what's going on actually on your machine so even the tables in here if you have made changes to views to uh, store procedure to whatever you the, automatically the management studio for sql Server will tell you that there is something different between you and the tfs so if i go down this list in here the tables that got affected will have a blue line that s the, the blue sphere the sf page data have changed and hopefully all the way at the bottom in here the lino table is brand new Alrighty, so now let's go ahead and right click on this test source control database and I'm actually say show history. Let's go ahead and show the history based on that. It's going to open up the uh, user interface in here and there it is as the latest tip actually in the database and it will show you a lot of the stuff um, in here. These are all the different tables in the database right now. Okay, let me go ahead and click close this guy. And I'm going to go, for instance, on tables. And we'll say get latest changes from source control or commit. Of course, I have changes that happen on my machine. So let's go ahead and commit the changes source control. And that will show us actually what the differences are. See, I immediately found that two objects have changed between here and my discount ASP.NET TFS system. So it will say the SF uh, page data. And I can see the schema at the bottom in here. Let me bring this a little bit bigger. If I go all the way down, you will notice that is the Lino column in here. All right, this is a Varchar 50 that was not available. I can click on this plus sign and I can actually move it between the two so I can update the system. If I go to the Lino table in here, this is the create table script. I can actually move it as well to TFS right away. See how simple that was? So yeah, I can actually put a comment on each one of in here. So I can say here he added a, a column. And I say commit for the first one. Actually, I committed both of them. I could have actually committed one at a time, sorry, <laughs> already. But anyway, so you can see now it's actually communicating with TFS, and now we are identical what's available on TFS. So it's all about schema at this point, and it's all about adding tables or adding more fields or columns into the database. And you can go back and forth and being able to, uh, to deal with these databases uh, really easily between any of the machines and any of your colleagues in the company. Hopefully that uh, gives you an idea how this stuff is done as far as source controlling a database inside Finity. And I will see you again soon in a different video. Thank you.